Hi there, I'm Rena from Lullabug Designs and today I am doing a tutorial on how to needle felt a mushroom like this one. Um, this is a beginner's uh, needle felting tutorial because I will go over all of the supplies that you need to create uh, one of these and all of the all of the detailed steps that go along with it. Um, but if you've needle felted before, you might still want to watch because you never know if you pick up little gems along the way. Um, just because everyone needle felts just a little bit differently, you never know what you could learn. Um, if you have any questions at all um, while you're needle felting or after you watch the video, feel free to drop me a question at lullabugdesigns.com. I hope you enjoy making this with me. So I'll begin this tutorial by introducing you to some of the supplies that you'll need to create these lovely little guys. Um, first of all, when I make my mushrooms with the needle felting, I like to use an armature underneath it just to give it some structure. Uh, you'll see here I've got the wire poking out the bottom. Um, this would help you to anchor it onto your project. Uh, I had, that's what I used to anchor them onto my hat bands. Um, you could also uh, put it through a slice of wood to make it a little sculpture or uh, you could just tuck it up that like wire bend the wire back up and tuck it back into the stem if you didn't want the wire in there but it's nice because it gives you the ability to bend it um, give it some shape it also gives it some structure when you're actually creating the mushroom um, otherwise if you bend it up you could also put a little tie on top and make it an ornament for uh, your house or your Christmas tree or something like that there's that little guy, a uh, fairly simple little shape on this one. Uh, this one I made a little more complicated. It has some gills underneath that I put in and also this little, little uh, skirting. I don't know what you'd call that, but it's super sweet. Um, so you, nice thing about these mushrooms is that you don't need to follow a pattern, a particular pattern. As long as you got the general shape of a mushroom, you can make them big and wide or skinny and tall or triangular pointed at the top or flat on the top uh, anywhere the wool takes you really so first of all like I said I like to use a bit of wire inside to give it some structure so I use uh, like a 20 gauge uh, copper wire but I mean anything will do uh, stiffer will just make it more more of a firm structure this is a little lighter um, you'll need a pair of pliers just to manipulate your wire. Um, when I'm making the top of my mushroom, I like to use a tool that you can find in your kitchen or around your house in the, in the workshop or what have you. I like to use wood because it gives, um, uh, gives some texture for the wool to sit against so it doesn't slip off very easily. But you can see here I've used a spatula from my kitchen and the top of it has a nice rounded pointed top and that's how I achieve that shape top. Um, it just makes it easier to work off of something when you're making a cup shape like that. This is another option. This is a felting tool that my dad made me, uh, but the top of it's nice and round. Uh, it makes a good good mushroom top as well. So just look around your house. You, could, you can find anything. I, I do recommend wood. There might be other materials that you prefer, but start with wood and then explore from there. Um, for the color range, of course, you're going to use some white wool. I've used merino wool here. Um, it's a bit of it's a lighter, uh, lighter wool. Uh, very, very soft. Very, um, very fine. Uh, you can also use heavier wools as well. They actually felt up a little faster, but you just can't do as fine work with them. Um, so I've got the white for the stem, and three different tones here uh, for the top. I like to have a couple different colors just to give it some, some uh, character. So the deep burgundy red, more of a fire truck engine red, and a little bit of orange just to kind of highlight it. And then of course, this is the main tool that you'll need. Um, this is a felting needle. Let's see if I can get it to actually, there we go. So you can kind of see here, if I can get my camera to focus on it, which I might have to move this to the side just so it... Oh, come on, baby. You can see that on that needle, there's just on the tip, there's little barbs. You can kind of see it reflecting in the light there. Can't quite get it to focus. Um, those, that is what makes it a needle felt, or a needle for felting wool. Those little barbs 
uh, catch on to the wool and when you stab it through the project it brings little fibers of wool through it so essentially you're just knotting this little this little needle will push the fibers through your project and create a um, uh, tangling them up basically and the more you tangling you the more you tangle the wool the tighter and firmer it gets uh, the stronger it gets so that is your your main tool for creating these little sculptures and just watch out they are desperately sharp and you will likely stab yourself with it a few times. Um, not entirely pleasant, but it is kind of the risk of doing the needle felting work. Um, injuries to your hands. But if you're careful, it might not happen to you, if you're lucky. <laughs> Happens to me almost every time. Um, and then I like to have a surface to work against, so I've got a piece of fairly dense foam. It's small, uh, portable. This is great. It's great for road trips, actually, um, to be able to do needle felting when you're on long, long trips or in the probably can't take it on a plane, but at least in your car, you can do it. Um, so I, I bought this specifically for needle felting. It's quite nice and dense. But in the beginning, when I was starting needle felting, I used this, <laughs> an old cushion from my couch. And you can see the felt still in it from when I was when I used to use this. It, it worked quite well. It was just more bulky. So, I mean, you can, you can find this stuff in your house, um, or you can go to a foam shop and get them to cut off the little piece, or they probably have little scrap pieces you could pick up. Um, there we go. So, let's get started. So I'm going to start by shaping my, my armature, uh, my wire for underneath the project. Um, basically, you just want to take out a length. Always best to do long because you can always cut it shorter when uh, when you're done. I'm just gonna get this out of the way so that it actually focuses. And there we go. Will you focus? Um, so snipping off a piece of wire about this length or longer, depending on what you're gonna do with it, and making a small loop on the top. You'll want to uh, make the loop uh, twist over itself twice. Whoops. So you can see that I've kind of got it spiraled there. Um, there we go. Okay, so see the loop. So that's the beginning there. Now I'm going to take a piece of the white wool. Just pull out a little, a little tuft like that out of there. And I'm just going to rub it between my fingers to kind of get a little bit of a point there to make it easier. And I'm going to thread it through the hole. It's hard to do this with the phone in my face. There we go. Okay. Good. Just want like a short little piece here. And actually what I'm going to do is just tighten up this loop. Probably made it just a little bit too big. There we go. Tighten it over. So there's the beginning. I've got this piece of wire with a tuft of wool out the top. So I'm going to leave this shorter tuft. So I've kind of put it through um, three quarters of the way. So three quarters of the wool is going to be sticking out this direction, the longer length, and then a quarter of it's going to be sticking out that direction. Um, this we'll use later on to anchor the the cap of the mushroom onto the top and this one I'm going to start curling it around my wire. So you kind of want to spread it out so the fibers are wide and thin there and then twist it up. I'm just going to keep raveling it around and down. Um, there we go. The length that you want your mushroom bottom to be. Okay. And it's funny, the wool, because it's so fine, it'll just stick there. It's pretty amazing. If you wanted to give it a little extra, you can always rub it between your hands just to kind of get the wool to felt in there a little bit, just minorly to hold it together. Okay, so that's the beginning of it. So now I'm going to get some more pieces of white and continue continue to wrap it around until the stem is the thickness that I want it. 
So this time I'm not just pulling the wool out, I'm gonna take a nice length. So I've got my length of wool here and I'm just gonna portion off a thin, thin piece here. All right, and this time I'm gonna start at the bottom and work my way up. Because I kind of want the bottom to be a bit thicker than the top. I want it to be thick and chubby on the bottom and a little thinner towards the top of it. I'm just going to wind it up. Up, 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 up. Once I reach the top, and start winding it down, 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 down. It's kind of nice using the wires, kind of like a tool to twist it. Meep, 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 meep. Okay, I'm going to add some more. You just keep going until you get the uh, the thickness that you want. So there's another tuft of wool that I'm putting on here. Just wrap those thin fibers along the top where you left off the last section, and double over it, and start twisting. There we go. I'm gonna hang around at the bottom here a little bit to make that just a little chubbier. Okay. So there's kind of like the little start of a stem here. Now, just to strengthen it up, I'm going to needle felt it. So I got my needle, and I just want to take these fibers that are kind of bursting out the end and stick them back in there to kind of round off the bottom carefully so you don't jab yourself. So there's about, let's see, looks like there's about four four individual, mm, no, six, six or eight barbs on the, on the needle and they go all the way up to about here. Oops, sorry. Go all the way up to about there on the needle. So if you want the full effect of the needle, you're going to stick it all the way through. So all those eight barbs each catch different, uh, eight different tufts, tufts of wool and pull them through. You can see how it's sort of tightening up on the bottom there now. Okay, so now that I have my stem completed, um, mostly, you don't have to, you can finish it up later too. I just want to make sure that it's securely in, in place so it's not going to unravel or anything like that. Um, we can start on doing the, the mushroom cap. So I'm going to start with some white um, for underneath the cap. Um, so I'm just going to split off just going to take off a, t a tuft here. So to get a tuft, you want to just pinch your your four fingers against the meat of your thumb. Just pinch the tips of the, f the wool fibers and pull. And you get a tuft like that. It's fairly thin. And then I'm going to use my good old spatula as my, as my form. And I'm just going to start wrapping it around. another tuft. And another tuft. Three layers will probably do it, depending on how thick you pull your wool. Mine's pretty thin, you can see. You want to make sure you get some fibers that go up and over the top as well. So you don't have any holes, and if you do have any holes, you just add more fiber. It's really not a science, it's more of a feel. 
So I'm just using my needle to kind of firm it down and secure it in place a little bit because it's going to be quite loose. Okay, that's good. I've got a nice little hat there. Now I'm going to start adding the red to the top. So this one I'm going to do a bit thicker. I'll probably, um, well, we'll see. I'll probably do about about five, five layers, four layers, something like that, depending on uh, how it looks. So I'm going to start with my main color. I'm going to do the bright fire engine red as my main, and then I'll add the uh, the orange, the orange and the um, and the deeper red as accents later on. You definitely don't want any of the white showing through. So this time I, I put two, la two layers um, around and now I want to do a layer over top that kind of goes over the top of it. And I'm just going to hold that and put another layer around just to kind of hold it in place. Honestly, my fibers aren't um, very, very tight. They're pretty spongy and loose right now. The tighter you get it, um, the easier it is to do the needle felting afterwards. Um, the more the more loose it is, the more air you have in between the fibers and the more you have to needle felt it to kind of get that air uh, to, to get it out and for it to tighten up. Um, I'm just ha having a little hard time <laughs> getting it perfectly tight uh, because I've got this this uh, camera in the way. But it's still gonna be just fine. So now I'm gonna add some of the deep red. I think I'm gonna add it to the bottom. Just circle it around here. There we go. I'm going to add another layer of the light red just to kind of blend it in. And it'll it'll blend as you needle felt it as well just because it pulls the fibers from one side over to the other. So it'll pull some of the light red in through the dark red and the dark red in through the light red which will blend it up really nice. And now I'm going to add a little bit of the orange. See, I, Now I don't want as much of the orange so I'm actually going to take that tuft and I'm going to pull it in half just to make little thin tufts. I'm going to add it to the top. And kind of a, oh, add it to the top in like a cross hatch kind of fashion here. Like that. <laughs> you should see the rigging I have here for my camera. <laughs> I am using a cookie sheet as part of my structure to hold my camera in place. <laughs> okay. Okay, I'm just gonna add a little bit of red. So you just fiddle, get it the color, um, the uh, the ombre that you are happy with. And again, it's not a science. It definitely is more like painting with the wool. So when you're happy with your painting, then you can start needle felting it in. And now I'm going to start tightening this baby up. And of course you got the wood structure underneath, so you don't want to jab it too hard. You don't want to break your needle, but just gently. Again, get the full, full um, use of the needle by sticking it all the way through, not just the, not just the little tip, but you want to kind of give a full, a full jab. So you get uh, the most use out of all those barbs that are in there. You see that it tightens up pretty quick. I'm kind of not going straight in like this. I'm kind of, oops, I'm kind of uh, going to the side. So I'm missing, missing the uh, the form underneath, the wood form underneath. Here we go. This guy's gonna be. I like him. He's gonna be. Uh, 
or her. <laughs> She's gonna be nice and tall, it looks like. It's nice when you, you don't have to be perfectionistic about it. You can you can kind of let it um, let it become its own form. You'll be happy with the results. Because it feels like you're just kind of along for the ride as this thing is being born. So when I'm needle felting, I'm just, uh, I'm not staying in one spot for long. I jab it and I turn it, jab it and turn it slightly. Just want to do even, whoops, even jabs um, all over. So you don't just shrink up one spot and then move to another spot to shrink up uh, entirely. You want to do them all a little bit so then it all forms nice and even together. Now I'm just jabbing along the edge to kind of tighten up this loose edge where there's lots of fibers coming down. Um, so now I'm just stabbing it kind of straight up into itself to mingle in those loose fibers along the edge there. This will shorten it quite a bit too. That's really starting to tighten up now. And eventually once it's tight enough, you can start taking it off your, off your tool. You see you got a nice little, nice little bowl um, you can start poking in from the from the inside out. Now when you poke from the inside out, what's going to happen is you're going to take those white fibers that you initially put in the inside and um, bring them to the outside. So that is a choice. Um, I like to have some of the white fibers coming through because I like the way it kind of dolls out the red and makes it look a lot more natural. Um, but if you don't like that, then you can more heavily needle felt from the outside to the inside. And that'll what that'll do is it'll pull the red fibers and mingle them up through the to the white. Um, and the white won't come through to the red. Um, but that's just that's your choice. You wanna you wanna poke a little bit from the inside just to make sure that those are um, oops, those are uh, getting felted as well. Um, if I have some white, I'll show you what I do. I'm just going to poke. I'm going to poke quite a bit from the inside to the outside, and then I don't know if you can see some of those, some of these fibers right here. The white ones are coming through. Um, if you don't like them, you just push them back to the other side. And I'll give a little bit of a shadow of white on this side, but uh, but not bad. So now's a good time um, to see how you like your stem. As you can see, my mushroom cap is quite a bit bigger than my stem. <laughs> so I am, I mean, first of all, this mushroom cap is going to shrink quite a bit. Like I said, I got mine pretty loose, so it's going to take a lot of extra felting. If I'd, if I'd wrapped it tighter, then it would have been, it would have been a little bit faster to, f to needle felt up. Um, but, uh, that's okay. It'll just take me a little bit longer and I might just make my stem a little bit bigger to accommodate it. That's a little bit better. So now as you're getting towards the end, um, 
of your needle felting and it feels like it's nice and firm, um, like, like this one is thinner and firmer. See, this one's still pretty pillowy. Um, I still have quite a bit of felting to do, but at this, at this point where it's still, it's still a little pillowy and soft, um, you can make some decisions about, about your shape. So I have, uh, what I could decide is maybe I want it to be more pointy at the top, which actually is pretty cute. Or if I want, I can make it more circular and bring down the top of it and, um, make it more like a bowl shape. I think I'm going to do pointed. So um, to to manipulate the shape a little once you have your basic shape, all you do is um, needle felt in the area that you want it to shrink. So I want if I'm wanting it to shrink to make it more to make it more uh, sh make it shorter and more bowl shaped, then I'd be I would be um, concentrating my needle felting on the top to shrink that up see that's already started to shrink it or I want to make it more pointed in this case so I'm going to concentrate my needle felting on the sides and bring the point up so really you're just slowly sculpting it with the needle Okay, so now I've got it more um, kind of bell-shaped, I guess. A little more pointed towards the top. It's still, it's still spongy. You can see that it's there's still air in between the fiber. There's still some needle felting to happen, but that's good because now I want to anchor in my stem while I still have, while I still have time. Oh, I'm liking the shape of that. Huh. <laughs> it's so fun. Um, so you've got this nice little piece of wool that you've left out the top um, as a means of anchoring it. So I'm just going to spread that out just so I have a little more fiber to work with. Um, sometimes it can get a little felted as you're as you're working so just kind of unfelt it. There we go so it's nice and splayed out and put it into the center. I was going to mention too that um, when I'm making a tall mushroom like this, it really isn't necessary to put the white in the inside. It kind of gets eaten up anyway. Um, the only time that it feels a little more necessary is when you're doing a wider mushroom. And it's nice to have the white um, for the gills in the underneath. So really that's a personal choice on your part. Um, it would, there we go. Okay, so to anchor it in, just hold your stem nice and firmly to the top of the inside of the mushroom, and then take those white fibers and start felting them in. You see me felt in there. Okay, once you've felted it a couple times, you'll see that that white has, is sticking through the top. You can really start to knot it up by, again, hold the stem firmly against the top of the inside of the mushroom and then felt it needle all the way through. That's gonna bring some of the red fibers through to the back side, intermingling it with the white, and just keep, keep um, repeating that process of inside, outside, and that way you'll get the fibers nice and knotted. Okay, so once you have the um, the mushroom the way that you want it, um, it's really it's really not a science. Um, but you, I mean, you want it tight enough that it's not going to fall apart, and it's nice to have the air out of it. But if you want it really soft, it might be the way that you like it, uh, or you could have it really, really firm. It just is totally dependent on how much you want to actually jab that little needle in there. Um, but once you have it the way that you like it, we can start making the spots. So this is where you're going to want to use your your support because there's a small and you can't really hold it hold it well in your hand. Um, but you're going to use your white fiber and just pull off little tiny tufts, like thin, thin little wisps, 
and ball them up in your fingers. Um, roll them up, making these little these little balls here. So um, when you're pulling out the wisps, you might want to break them if they come out this long. If you don't want the the ball to be huge, you can break it up and get a little tough like that, and just roll them in your fingers, make little balls. And go ahead and make up a ton of these, probably about, well, it's up to you, uh, 20 maybe. Now we can add them. So I just like to pick it up with my needle and put it on and jab it in. Mostly just around the edges. Just tag it in there. I personally like to make it the the dots not, um, I like to make them pretty random, just to make it look a little more natural. Um, but you could also do it cartoon style and make it really even and big and round, if you like. And there we go. A beautiful Amanita Mascaria <laughs> mushroom. Um, perfect, perfect little ornament um, to put in your fairy garden or to decorate your mantle on your fireplace, to hang from your Christmas tree, um, if you do that sort of thing. Um, or to, to embellish your, your hats, which is what I like to use them for. I hope you enjoyed this and that you didn't, uh, hurt your fingers too much. Um, and explore using different colors and different shapes. And uh, you can make yourself a little, a little terrarium of mushrooms. Thank you so much for, for joining me with this. And, uh, we'll see you again soon.